So, for those of you that were here last week, we started a new series. I took it directly from the Gospel according to Dr. Seuss. But, um, <laughs> but last week we established that the Grinch hated Christmas. He hated those mistletoe wreaths. He hated those stockings. He hated all those who toys. He hated the noise. He even hated the who pudding. And most of all, he hated the rare who roast beast. But most of all, <coughs> the Grinch hated all that who singing. And for 53 plus years, he put up with their ringing. And now, he is going to end it. With one very big call, the Grinch was determined to stop Christmas from coming at all. And so, as we know, the Grinch arrives the irony of that story of all of his preparations for his night of Christmas stealing would be his undoing. You see, he has prepared over and over to get ready, and even putting on that St. Nick garb and finding the sleigh, and even getting Max his antlers and getting those bigger bags that could be stuffed. The Grinch was preparing the way for a new heart. Preparations are like that if you don't realize it. I guess everything in life really is important, but it takes preparation. And here to say that the Grinch's preparations were the most preparations because God's preparations to redeem all of creation are really the greatest gifts of all. In fact, it's so important that Paul tells us that all creation grows waiting for the redemption of God. You see that God has preparations for all of us. From the very beginning of time and doing such like bringing the Old Testament law of Moses and reminding us that no matter how hard we try and how hard we work to keep the very letter of the law that we cannot even save ourselves at times even through that law. See the fact is that we simply are reminded that we often fall short in God's eyes. God chose the people. He chose those Israelites to be those chosen people and to remind us that we all are a part of that and that we cannot do it alone. And then God gave us those prophets, those men and women who spoke God's word. And a very pointed time of doing it, but they did it in such a manner, and they even do it so now. And through this we are reminded that there are consequences for our actions. Even if we do not turn away from our wrongdoings, that we are separated from God. So, God initiated the final preparations. God came to Zechariah and said to Zechariah, you have to remember... Let me start that again. So God came to Zechariah and God reminded Zechariah who he was. Now Zechariah was an old man and he was a priest. And he had a wife, Elizabeth. And we'll just say Elizabeth was way beyond those childbearing years. Let's face it, she was just an old woman. <coughs> and to add to all of this, they never had children. They'd always prayed about having children, but they never were blessed. So now, it came to Zechariah's section of his priesthood that those who would go into the Holy of Holies, into that very sanctuary, into the center of that temple, where that Ark of the Covenant lays and was housed, where at that time they believed where God lived and where they and where there was also that offering of the incense. So some of you may recall and not everyone could go into this special place. So they had to cast lots back in that time and Zechariah became that chosen one. So Zechariah now goes into the holies of holies and I might add it's was a very frightening endeavor itself for those priests in those days to go into the center of the temple 
to go into where the Holy of Holies were by yourself. And I'm sure you start, remember the story of Moses back in the days when Moses went to the Holy of Holies, came out with a sunburn because he had been in the very presence of God. Not like the Ten Commandments movie where, Jesus, where, where Moses goes up to the top of the hill and comes back with the tablets and drops one and there were 15 and now there was 10. But it shows that the presence of Moses going towards God through that brightness of the holies, that his face was burnt. But now here's Zechariah going now to offer that incense and what happens is an angel comes to him and says, Hey, Zechariah, Elizabeth's pregnant. She's with child. She will bear a son and you will name him John. I don't know if anybody remembers what Zechariah's response was, but let me tell you, what happened after that, when Zechariah heard that news, he didn't jump up and down and say, hot diggity dog, I'm going to have a son. He was silent and he was speechless. He had no words. He wasn't able to say anything. In fact, he wasn't able to speak again until after John was born. And in that time for him, it was difficult because it was the time where John was going to be named. Now, Zechariah still wanted to name him Zechariah after him, but Elizabeth tells him, no, his name will be John. So Zechariah kind of gives in and says, okay, fine, and gave his permission to allow the son to be called John. And at that point, he was able to speak. And well, when he did, he shared with all of us what the angel said. It's that John was to prepare us for that coming of the Lord, and as we know it, God wasn't finished right there. Because that angel then approached Elizabeth's cousin. And I think I know who, you're speaking, who, who I'm speaking of. We're speaking of Mary. And as we know, the angel said to Mary that you soon shall bear a son and you shall name him Emmanuel, God with us. And you should call him Jesus. Not Henry, like Joseph wanted to do, as we heard last week. And for those of you that weren't here last week... You can go back and watch the YouTube sermon and hear how Jesus' middle name was Henry. But it was that point where it was to be empowered by God to begin this proclamation of the coming of the Lord, to proclaim the recent baptisms of forgiveness of our sins while calling the nation of Israel and to all those back to the faithfulness of God. And to let the people know that the Messiah was coming. And it would be then very soon, it was that preparation. That preparation of the coming of the Lord and Messiah. And this is why we have the season of Advent. I'm not sure if anyone recalls or knows what the first day of the Christian year is. And it's not January the 1st. And don't get messed up by that January, February, March, because that's the Roman calendar. The Christian calendar is quite different. The first day of the year is the first Sunday of Advent. So last Sunday was the first day of the Christian year in our tradition. And it's so that we can get ready and we can have those four Sundays, which we represent by the candles on our Advent wreath, leading up to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, which represents the white candle in the middle of our wreath, our Advent wreath. And it's a time for us to get ready and to ask ourselves, are we prepared to be ready? So I must say that I think I get it, that we spend these weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas getting ready, because the world is ready, they hung their decorations and started those sales back in August, let me tell you. <laughs> Walking into Costco and the big air balloons or whatever you call those things, that air helium things, and all the trees are up and everywhere in August. I mean, 
And I guess I can also say that I'm sure probably a majority of you have your Christmas shopping done, or I think you do. Mm -hmm. And most of you have them all wrapped. And by the way, I wear a large. No, <laughs> maybe an extra large. Mm. No. But we prepare for all that way back before we even get to this time of year. I'm sure your trees are probably up and the lights and the decorations are in place. And, well, you can see... We're pretty well decorated in the church as well. Yeah. We didn't wait. We did it like Thanksgiving weekend, I think, is when we started. But is that all? Is that really what we think is pre being prepared? Not really. There is so much to be done. And let me tell you, and don't ask me how I know this, but if you don't get all of your ingredients for Christmas dinner before 8 p.m. on Christmas Eve, you are somewhat out of luck. <laughs> because nothing is open. Not even Walmart is open after 8 o'clock on Christmas Eve. So let me tell you, if you're doing Christmas dinner, get it now. But that isn't the kind of pre preparation that we're really talking about. And don't get me wrong, it's important to be prepared for all these things. And trust me, it's prepared to have all that food, especially when you're having a house full over. But are we truly prepared for the advent of Christ that is among us? For each and every day that comes to us, we are given that bread, we are given that new start because we ask for that forgiveness. We're asking for that help to do better the next time. And sadly, we spend so little time preparing what we are about to celebrate, that coming of that Christ child, that Messiah that's among us. And if we only took that time to prepare, if we only took that time to think of what we're doing on a Sunday morning when we're in worship, that we're not just doing it on Sunday, or at least on the Lord's day, that we don't do it, we should be doing it every single day. And like every breath we take and every opportunity that God provides, we are and can be that blessing to others. We are opening new hearts and we are allowing the Christ to come to our lives to prepare us for that coming of eternity. Now I'm not sure how many of you are in the habit each Sunday to take home the bulletins, which I wish you would, or take time to go and re-watch a sermon on YouTube, or to look back as we prepare. I'll tell you, there are times where I will go back and watch my sermon from the following, the, the previous week, so I can prepare for the week coming ahead. But I know that for most of us, or I would hope, that we know that we have two seasons within the church. One is Lent, and the other is being Advent, of which we are upon right now. And and as Christmas, we don't take those two seasons. And as Christians, excuse me, sometimes we don't take those two seasons seriously. And knowing what God wants us to do, we just take these seasons and kind of put them over here and go on with our everyday lives. But know that as the people of God, we are called by God to spend each moment of our lives allowing ourselves to know the ways that God can love us and to use us and that we might give God that world just as God gave us that only begotten Son. So as we know, Christ came not because we deserved it and not because we even asked. Christ came because God loved each and every individual and God wants us to know that even exactly what the Grinch found out is that at the end of that story, the Grinch has all of these sacks of toys, all of those Christmas fixings, all of those things that he took from Whoville, and we know that as he was struggling back up that mountain with everyone's stuff, does anybody remember what happened at the end of the story? He gave it all back, that's right. He gave it all back because, you see, not that the sacks were full and not the thought that it was all he needed and that's what he wanted. Because he wanted a full sack for himself. 
and come down. You can't all be like that in our lives. But because we spend so much time of our lives preparing and holding on to those facts that sometimes we forget. And as he gave it back, he rem reminded himself of why he gave it back. We also hear Christ saying that, bring them to me because they're too heavy for you. And I'll carry them for you, so bring them. And lay them down before my feet, and I will make it way lighter, because together we can face all things together. So as we come through this Advent season, as we come to the table this day, I invite you to bring those sacks, lay them down, and let it all go. Let those gifts that we have come back. Because we know that Christ grows within our heart, allowing us to pave that way. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.